Hello everyone, in today's video, we're gonna count down the top 10 movies and TV shows we're most looking forward to 2021. If you're new to Fan Dummies, I'm Greg. And I'm Aaron. And we talk about superheroes, science fiction, and fantasy topics every single week. Hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, hit that bell so you don't miss any of our content. Aaron, are you ready to kind of get into this list or what? Oh, yeah. I'm super excited for 2021. Yeah. I mean, not only is 2020 behind us, which is really good, <laughs> but I think the stuff coming out for 2021 is really, really great. Yeah. We're getting all the stuff that was supposed to come out last year, this year, and this year's stuff, too. Hopefully. Yeah. We'll see. Still February. <laughs> Some people out there are probably thinking... Aaron and Greg, it's almost March. How are you making a what to expect in 2021 video now? Like, I mean, we're already two months in. What do you say to that, Aaron? Why not? I mean. I don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't know what you're saying. Just why not? <laughs> yeah. I think we could make it in December if we wanted to. Yeah. But it would be less. There would be less on the list. Yeah. It would be fewer topics. But here's the interesting part about 2021 is a lot of the dates for a lot of these shows fluctuate based on their filming schedules in 2020, right? A lot of them had to get pushed and they're finishing filming right now. So what we thought we were going to get in 2021, we might not get that all. So what we tried to do is we wanted to make a list of things that we feel very confident we're going to have in 2021. Instead of just speculating. Yeah. Ready? Yep. Let's do it. Number 10, The Orville Season 3. Now, this is a series created by Seth MacFarlane, and Season 3 is actually going to be on Hulu. An exploratory ship from Earth faces intergalactic challenges 400 years in the future. Now, we watch Seasons 1 and 2, and it's great. Uh-huh. <laughs> We haven't covered it on the podcast. I think the dates just didn't line up. Sometimes we watch things and we have a full calendar already, or this might have been right when we were starting the podcast. And This was way pre-podcast, if that makes sense. Ah, maybe <laughs> so. But this is also rumored to be the final season for Orville, because oh. Seth MacFarlane, I think, wants to go do other stuff, Yeah, which is really crazy. I love it when you're so busy and you just have so many opportunities that you're just like i'm done with this i'm going off i'm going on to my next project (laughs) yeah well we'll see if his opportunities are still around yeah because you know things change yeah he does a lot of animation projects so yeah he's probably safe filming had to stop and start a couple times throughout the last year and this year Mm -hmm. they actually stopped it in january but i think they're filming right now aren't they yeah they're back because i follow some of the actors on instagram and they'll post pictures from the set or whatever. And I'm like, yes, they're back. Like, give me some Orville. <laughs> no. Hopefully they'll get this done and we'll have it in the fall because that's when it's scheduled. And yeah. we think there's a good chance for that based on all data. Fall's looking good. Yeah. It's not a high CGI show. No. They pretty much just have to film it and do some CGI. Yeah. Exactly. Or maybe more of it's CGI than I realized, but I doubt it. <laughs> It's probably just not CGI with the people. Yeah. Like it's, you know, spaceship battles that they can do on their own. Yeah. Yeah, they already have film from last season. (laughs) (laughs) Just going to reuse it. Number nine, Star Trek Lower Decks Season 2. Nice. The support crew serving on one of Starfleet's least important ships, the USS Cerritos, have to keep up with their duties, often while the ship is being rocked by a multitude of sci-fi anomalies season one ended really cool but it was also kind of sad yeah and we're not going to spoil it exactly the cool part is i think now if you're international not inside the united states you can watch it on amazon prime Ooh. or amazon prime video people should watch this if they haven't it's a really fun show mm-hmm. i can't wait to see how season two unfolds but after watching season one i'm pretty excited for it and there's no premiere date yet, but on Twitter, Mike McMahon says that they're working on it right now. So yeah, hopefully soon. They've got a lot of it done, and they're working hard on it. So, And it's an animation, so they can work on it and be safe. Number eight, 
Lock and Key Season 2. After their father is murdered under mysterious circumstances, the three Lock siblings and their mother move to their ancestral home, the Key House, which they discover is full of magical keys that may be connected to their father's disappearance. I mean, what an amazing description. Yeah. Season one was absolutely incredible. I had no idea what it was about. I had no idea it was based on a comic, Mm -hmm. but I watched it and I loved it. I mean, just, just the idea of taking a key and plugging it into your back and turning it and having things happen, or you put it in a door and turn it or whatever, like it's just a really fun idea. Yeah, for sure. Can we get some old keys? Maybe if we ever buy an old house. We'll get like a bucket full of old keys we don't know what to do with. Oh, that sounds exciting. <laughs> Lock and Key is set to be released in September. I think September is safe because they wrapped up filming on this thing in December 2020. Oh. So I would say it's a pretty certain thing that we get this on Netflix in September. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. And it's kind of like the right season for a spooky fantasy show. The house is up north somewhere, so, you know, it's snowy and cold and fits Mm -hmm. the time perfect. Yep. Number seven, What If? What If will be the first animated series for the MCU. Exciting. Uh Uh-huh. For example, what if Peggy Carter got the serum instead of Steve Rogers? What? What if? (laughs) (laughs) Basically, what if? Are stories that change major events in the Marvel Universe. Wow. Like, what if Peter Parker didn't get bit by the spider? It'd be boring. Well, somebody else probably would. But, see, what if? (laughs) 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 But don't worry, the show's not going to be canon. It's all non-canon, so they can make up pretty much whatever they want. Yeah. There's no specific date for it yet, but it's supposed to premiere in 2021 sometime. And there's a trailer for it, and it's awesome. Yeah. I'm just going to say that. (laughs) And based on all the information online, we believe that this is either complete or near complete because it's animated. Mm -hmm. And they could work on it remotely and and all the goodness there safely. Mm -hmm. I guess because it isn't canon- they can pretty much release it anytime because it doesn't have to like fall in line with the other shows in the MCU. Yeah, exactly. I like that idea too. Mm-hmm. It'd be cool if it got a spinoff because there's all sorts of, of multiverse shows that can be created. Yeah. And a what if is just another way to do that. I think that's what phase four is for Marvel. It's, it, it's really introducing us to that multiverse. Interesting. Number six, why the last man? Why? His name is Yorick. Ah. It isn't W-H-Y. It's the letter Y. But why is he the last man? Just Uh as the title states, the series centers around Yorick Brown and his pet capuchin monkey ampersand, which is the best name for a monkey ever. Ampersand. (laughs) And they are the only two males that have survived an apparent global androcide, which means all the men are dead. Ah. It sounds like all the male monkeys, too, because Ampersand is the last and Yorick is the last human male. Mm. Why the Last Man is going to be on Hulu sometime this year. Mm -hmm. And I read that filming started in October of 2020. So I suspect we're going to get this thing. Sometime in the fall. Yeah. I'm really, really excited. I read all of these comics years and years ago. And I can't wait to reread them. Because if someone would say, what's your all-time favorite comic book? It would have been Why the Last Man. Really? Yeah. All-time favorite. But I just hope it holds up. Because, you know, you're... Tastes change over time. Yeah, yeah. So I hope that uh, it's still as good when I reread it. (laughs) Number five, 
Lois and Superman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lois and Superman have to raise their two teenage sons in Smallville, and the sons have Kryptonian superpowers as well. Of course. <laughs> it's starring Tyler Hecklin and Elizabeth Tolak, and we've seen them before in the CW-verse. You know, the Arrowverse, but now Arrow's not around. So they changed the name of it? It's just the CW-verse now, I guess. Oh. I don't know. Okay. Hey, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but it's premiering with the two hour episode on February 23rd on the CW. Wow. And there's a trailer for it and it looks pretty cool. I always thought that they needed a Smallville sequel. Uh -huh. This is it, I think. Kind of, I yeah. guess. It's not it's not Clark and Lois young. Like it's not like early adulthood. I think it's more grown up a little bit more. Yeah. So they're not touching on like a right after Smallville life. No, no, it's not right after, but apparently I read something that they do when they do go back to Smallville, that they meet up with Clark's old flame, Lana. Ooh. <laughs> Spicy. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me Smallville feel, feels. I need to go watch that show now. I know. It's so good. I know what we're going to be doing after the podcast. Oh. I have to edit it. But after that. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, Invincible. This is an adult oriented animation from the creators of The Walking Dead, Robert Kirkman. Yeah. It's adapted from the source material comic book titled Invincible. And I am super, super pumped about this one because I see this graphic novel laying around our house. Aaron has already read this one once yeah. and raved about it. The story revolves around 17 year old Mark Grayson, who is just like every other guy his age, except his father's the most powerful superhero on the planet. <laughs> Omni man, which is a dumb name. What is it? One punch man. I get One Punch Man vibes, though, don't you? Yeah, or is it Homelander? I also get Homelander vibes. This is an adult show, so yeah, it's not for kids. There are some really great voice actors in this show, so check it out. You can look it up on IMDb. We're not going to get into it on in this episode, but it's going to be on Amazon Prime. It comes out March 26th, so right around the corner. We got to get started on this reread, Aaron, mm -hmm. for you. It's the first read for me. Yeah. So just read for me, <laughs> reread for you. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Yeah, it's going to be good. I miss reading the Walking Dead comics when they used to make them, so. Yeah. I still haven't read those. I need to. <sighs> yes, okay. you should. Number three, Shadow and Bone. <laughs> this series is adapted from books as well. It's adapted from the Shadow and Bone series and the Six of Crow series, in case you want to read them. Greg and I have read... The Shadow and Bone books. I've read the Six of Crow books as well. Greg, you need to catch up on those. Yeah. You <laughs> you liked these books so much uh -huh. that you practically demanded that I read them. Well. <laughs> and since this, we knew the series was, was being made, uh -huh. I read them. Yeah. And I read all three of the Shadow and Bone books, the first trilogy, uh -huh. like really fast. Yeah. And it is so, so good. Mm-hmm. It's a fantasy series, in case you're not familiar with it, and it follows these characters that are Grisha, and they have these natural elements that they use. It's kind of like Avatar. That's why I think I find it kind of fun, because it's, you know, they don't just use magic. It's like, you know, the Force. It's kind of like Star Wars and the Force. Yeah, it's elemental magic. Yeah. It seems like so long ago that Lee Bardugo and Netflix announced that they were making this series. Uh, I'm pretty excited for it, pretty much just because the books are so good. Yeah. The series is going to debut April 23rd on Netflix. That's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. So, so, so excited. Yeah. Can you imagine Shadow and Bone being in our top three? I mean, all of the shows that are coming out this year, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. I love reading books. And then watching the show or movie. So I think that's probably why I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. And it's something different. 
Like it's not just superheroes. It's not aliens. It's I know. A little bit I of like fantasy. it. Yeah, it's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Or it's a lot of fantasy. <laughs> yeah. Number two, the book of Boba Fett. Now you know we had to get some Star Wars on this list. Uh-huh. John Favreau, Dave Filoni, and Robert Rodriguez will act as the showrunners. So basically, it's going to be great. It's just going to be another season of The Mandalorian. It's going to be just like. The original Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. Mandalorian OG. (laughs) Rodriguez previously directed chapter 14, The Tragedy in The Mandalorian, where Boba Fett was introduced. And that was awesome. Uh Tamura Morrison and Ming-Na Wen are both confirmed for the show. So it's going to be the crew. The same crew is in the Mandalorian. Yeah. We saw them at the end of the Mandalorian. Yeah. Take over Jabba's Mm -hmm. little hut there Mm -hmm. or castle or whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to even hide my feelings about this one. They better do this one right. Like I have extremely high hopes because the Mandalorian won't come out until after this is over. Mm. So if they're making us wait for Mandalorian so that they can do this, it better be worth the wait. That's all I'm saying. It probably will. I sure hope so. It's scheduled for Disney Plus in December. Yeah. It's so far away, but it'll probably come fast. Yeah. (laughs) Number one, the Snyder Cut of the Justice League. Nice. Maybe this movie will make me like Wonder Woman again. I hope so. That's all I'm saying. After that last... Wonder Woman fiasco, 1984, just like take all my collectibles. Just, (laughs) Yeah, it was bad. What is getting me excited though is that they just released a trailer and it looks awesome. Yeah, the trailer looks better than the entire Whedon cut. Oh yeah. (laughs) And then it's been a while since we've watched the Whedon cut, so we're going to go back. And watch that probably the week before we cover the Snyder Cut. Yeah. When the Snyder Cut comes out. Yeah. So you'll have two weeks of Justice League on this show. Yeah. Unless we rewatch it and we're like, oh, just can't. <laughs> the Snyder Cut is going to be available to watch March 18th on HBO Max. So excited. There's lots of coverage out there for the Snyder Cut, but I think it's going to be good enough that it's worth it. Yeah. Hopefully. They put a lot of effort into this movie, so. We are really excited about the amazing TV shows and movies that are coming out this year. I mean, so many great ones. We would love to hear your top 10 in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and hit that bell so you don't miss our next video. You can find us at Fandummies on all social media. Bye. Bye.